China's organ transplant system was once a cause of international scorn and outrage, as doctors harvested organs from prisoners condemned to death by criminal courts and transplanted them into patients who often paid dearly for the privilege. After years of denials, China now acknowledges that history and has declared that the practice no longer occurs, largely thanks to the perseverance of a health official who, with the quiet backing of an American transplant surgeon, turned the system around over the span of a decade. That official, Huang Jifu, built a register of voluntary donors, overcoming both entrenched interests that profited from the old ways and a traditional Chinese aversion to dismemberment after death. In true modern Chinese fashion, Donors can sign up through a link and app available through the ubiquitous Alipay online payment system. More than 230,000 people have done so, and a computerized database matches donors with compatible potential recipients, alerting doctors by text message as soon as organs become available. Leading transplant experts outside China, including once severe critics, have slowly been won over. There has been a substantial change in China which has been in the right direction, said Jeremy Chapman, a leading Australian physician and former president of the Transplantation Society who in the past had harshly censured Chinese transplantation practices. Yet skeptics still abound, and a darkly sinister accusation continues to be heard. Just last year, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a resolution condemning state sanctioned forced organ harvesting in China and accusing the Communist Party of killing prisoners of conscience, held in secret, outside the usual criminal prisons, to feed the transplant industry. Huang and his allies in the transplant industry around the world dismiss those allegations. In their eyes, the China that has emerged on the world stage as a financial and technological power, with a rising and increasingly sophisticated middle class has successfully done away with a wicked practice from the past. The use of prisoners' organs had left China a global pariah in the transplant field. Relying on prisoners caught in a corrupt and inhumane legal system, China had built the world's second-largest transplant industry after the United States. It was effectively an unregulated system in which organs were being delivered not to the most deserving recipients but to the highest bidders vast profits were generated as medical ethics were set aside. Financial interests were driving malpractice, Huang said. The allocation of organs had become a game of wealth and power, with no social justice. Thousands of organs were being harvested from executed prisoners every year, but over the course of a decade, Huang has garnered support at the highest levels of government and succeeded in pushing China's medical establishment into dropping the often lucrative practice. Since 2010, Huang has slowly built the register of voluntary donors, who now meet the needs of patients who require transplants. Such a register is a breakthrough for China. The turn toward reform began in 2006, when Huang was the first to publicly acknowledge an open secret in the medical industry that prisoners' organs were the basis of the nation's fast-growing transplant industry. Huang's efforts to clean up the system, with the quiet backing of University of Chicago transplant surgeon Michael Millis, surmounted stiff resistance, and met with skepticism and sometimes lurid allegations that continue to dog their work. It has been very tough going over ten years, Huang said in an interview in his office in Beijing as he described his battle against powerful vested interests. Huang and Millish both work for medical centers with close links to the Rockefeller Foundation and its spin-off the China Medical Board, CMB. They met at a Rockefeller CMB-sponsored meeting nearly a decade ago. They discovered a shared concern about the workings of China's transplant industry. The pair agreed that an abrupt end to the use of prisoners' organs was not feasible and would only create a black market. Instead, they resolved to work for gradual change. With a grant from the CMB, and with Millis as Huang's main consultant, they began to investigate alternative approaches. China had more than 600 organ transplant centers in a sprawling, unregulated system. That number was whittled down to about 160 registered and approved centers in 2007, when legislation was also introduced to outlaw organ trafficking and ban foreigners from coming to the country to receive Chinese organs. The public was brought on board with the help of the Chinese Red Cross, 
and skeptics in China's medical profession were gradually won over by Huang's persistence and his ability to secure official support. Last year, Huang said, 4,080 donors supplied organs after their deaths, and 2,201 living donors gave organs to relatives. In total, 